Hey, it's your buddy, Mike Messier. Just watched TLC 2017. I'll give the show an 8. Uh, be nice, give it an 8.5. I thought it was a good show. I thought, uh, you know, TLC is one of those, you know, pay-per-views that you don't expect a whole lot, perhaps. I think having just the one TLC match was a good thing tonight. Uh, specialty matches in general are best when there's just one or maybe two a night. Uh, watching the show tonight, I was reminded for some reason of uh, the Kurt Angle six steels, six sides of steel cage match at Showdown 2000. Was it 2008 or 2009? I believe which I attended his match versus Samoa Joe. Uh, TNA used to do those pay-per-views where they had all cage matches all night. Gets to be redundant. This. On the other hand, one big clusterfuck of a fun match. I thought it was just a fun match. I thought what's lost in the match, if anything, obviously, is Braun Strowman uh, turned babyface tonight. And that is really overshadowed um, by everything else. The match seemed to be about 30 or 40 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. Uh, good, good call to get Kurt Angle out of there. My buddy watching uh, noted that. It was a good call to get, uh, you know, Kurt out of the match uh, for quite some time so that he could rest properly or just not have to do a lot of stuff. It did seem like, you know, Braun took care of him, so to speak. Uh, one thing, storyline-wise, that didn't make a lot of sense, they had um, Braun put Kurt through a table... And then Braun turned babyface, you know, a few minutes later or 10 or 15 minutes later or whatever the fuck. Why don't they, why shouldn't, they should have had Kane be the one that put him through the table, meaning Angle, so then Angle could get his revenge on Kane later in the match or down the road at a match. Now, the guy that put fucking Angle through a cage is now a babyface. So you just kind of fucked that one up, but typical WWE. Uh, I guess the days of Pat Patterson or whoever the fuck putting these matches together are gone now. Um, there's all this construction shit going on. Um, meanwhile, the Mickey James match looked pretty good. Mickey James uh, losing, doing the honor, so to speak, uh, to Mickey, uh, to what's her uh, fucking uh, Alexa Bliss. Alex Bliss looking very attractive tonight, biscuit butt and all, as Mickey James referred to her as, uh, which is kind of a weird thing because if she was using the biscuit butt as an insult, but really biscuit butt is a compliment. Um, but biscuit butt looked pretty good. They both looked really nice. I, I was so admiring in a positive way. I think Mickey's had a couple of kids or at least one kid. She looks great. I mean, Mickey Jones looks fantastic. Uh, Mickey James, I should say, not Mickey Jones. It's a fucking monkeys. Um, whatever the fuck. Um, for the first match, the ladies' uh, Japanese match, I thought Emma. Uh, you know, look, it's not a big secret. I'm not the biggest NXT guy, but it was a good match. Uh, welcome to the main roster, blah, blah, blah. But I thought Emma, you know, in defeat, came off stronger just for even being on the show be honest with you, I think Emma's just a, a character that they don't know quite what to do with, if anything, so her own thing is social media, blah, 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 we're fine, uh, the Finn Balor, AJ, I'm going to watch that again, I thought it was, um, you know, my, my buddy pointed out that, that the Bacardi symbol looks like it's on fucking Finn Balor's back, with that makeup, the bullet sign sign at the end. Look, this whole thing with the Bullet Club and the Young Bucks and cease and desist. It's starting to feel, and it probably, it either is or it isn't, that WWE is kind of testing out to see how much of a following uh, the Young Bucks and even Cody Rhodes have at this point to see if they want to bring them in full time, meaning the Bullet Club. If there's business to be done, they'll do it. I mean, they brought you know, the ECW originals in, in 97, early 97, the legitimate ECW. Um, they brought in Ric Flair and the NWA belt. They, they meaning WWE, um, you know, they are a corporation that does a lot of things, you know, I don't know if you want to say traditionally or safely or whatever the fuck, but 
they brought in a guy named Brian Daniel, Dan, Daniel Bryan, uh, Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan, whatever you want to call him, because it's a good business to make sense. So if the fans have this thing, even a small niche audience or a growing and growing audience likes the Bullet Club, they see the t-shirt sales, they see Cody Rhodes, um, they know that these guys can carry a match, they've employed the Young Bucks for a couple of things, uh, skits and whatnot, so I mean, it might very well happen, so if, I'm not the biggest fucking Young Bucks guy, obviously, I'm not a big fan of super kicks left and right, but if they feel, they being Hunter, whoever the fuck, Vince, if they feel there's business to be done, there's business to be done. Uh, what's the big walk away from this thing? Um, I think basically you can have a fun match, a 40 minute tables, ladders, and chairs. I was was really thinking about this match as looking back at WCW 1996 Uncensored and that clusterfuck of a cage match. If you haven't seen that one, look into it. It was the alliance to end Hulkamania. It was basically like the top eight fucking heels in WCW circa 96 before the NWO. Lex Luger, Kevin Sullivan, Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Haku, Barbarian, uh, and then they brought in Zeke Angsta, who used to be called Zeus, and I believe, they believe it or not, it's a defensive term, the, the ultimate solution, they brought him in, I believe that was uh, a guy who died shortly thereafter, a guy from World Class, Jeth- Jethro or something, uh, I think he wrestled Bruce Brody a few times, big fella, big fella. So so stupid, but um. Anyway, that match was such a clusterfuck. But if you do that match, even wasn't so bad because it was just a brawl. And I think this was kind of a fun little brawl. They had these little spots they worked out. People going through stages. Kane more or less turning on the fucking uh, what's his face. I'll admit that chair spot with the chairs from the ceiling was pretty damn good. My opinion. It was a good show. Uh, I think they did the best they could with what they had. Um, you know, and it seemed to be pretty good. So, I mean, you, you can... It was interesting. Of all the choices they had for these substitutes, I thought about it. They didn't go with Cena or Brock or anybody besides who they went with, which is Kurt and AJ. So, I guess they trusted those guys. Uh, but anyway, Mike Messier, I hope you enjoyed the fucking show. Meanwhile, the New England Patriots were asserting their physical domination over the Atlanta Falcons, proving once again um, that the Super Bowl was no fluke and that New England Patriots are superior. All right, enjoy your damn week.